What have we learned about the ACC so far this season? The next Mitchell Northam is here to talk all things ACC from the ACC SEC Challenge to how this season has surprised us so far and who and what to watch moving forward. Locked on Women's Basketball starts now. Ogumba Wallet for the win! You are Locked on Women's Basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Hello and happy Friday. You are locked on to women's basketball. I'm host Natalie Heverin and I'm a features writer and the Atlantic 10 beat reporter for the next. Thanks for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On Women's Basketball is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. If this is your first time listening to Locked On Women's Basketball, welcome. We at The Next have over 100 reported pieces every single month. We have a beat reporter on every single WNBA team, one on more than 15 different NCAA beats, including the two of us. So get that YouTube subscription up, and you can also support us by subscribing to The Next for $9 a month, $72 a year at thenexthoops.com. Today, we'll be chatting all about the ACC, including what happened over the last couple days, the ACC SEC Challenge, the season so far, and who and what to watch moving forward. Joining me today is one of the next ACC beat reporters, Mitchell Northam. So first of all, thank you for joining me. Um, and, And to get started, what were some of the key results from the ACC SEC Challenge? Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I thought that Notre Dame's win over Tennessee was super impressive um, to go on the road and to play that game without Olivia Miles and Sonia Citron and uh, Prosper. Um, you know, they came back from being 16 points down, and I, it's it really proved that to me, you know, even without those key players, this is still a team that's going to be reckoned with in the ACC. Um with Hannah Hildalgo and Maddie Westbelt leading the way. Um, you know, those two players have been awesome this season. And despite all these injuries, I think Notre Dame still considers itself to be and has proven to be um, a top team in the ACC this season. Um, some of the other ones that stood out, you know, I, I thought it was impressive that Louisville went down to Ole Miss and, and got a win, um, especially after – you know, they had sort of an up and down MTE, um, you know, losing to Alabama and all that good stuff. Um, you know, UNC, I thought, really showed some fight against South Carolina last night um, and really showed some growth after they had back to back losses um, over their sort of feast week tournament down in Florida. Um, Even though they lost to South Carolina, I think there's a lot of good things to take away from that. Um, And I think we have a lot of maybe questions about Virginia Tech after they lost to LSU. Um, And I think they still have some things to figure out. You know, they are replacing two starters from that Final Four team from a year ago. And I think that's a team that's still learning itself and sort of trying to find its way. And who impressed you the most? Yeah, um, you know, Syracuse, I thought, you know, beating Alabama in that way was really um, impressive. Uh, You know, another team that I think um, is going to be, I think they're going to be an NCAA tournament this team this year out of the ACC. They were sort of left on the bubble last season. Um, I actually got the chance to see them in person a couple weeks ago when I went up to Maryland to see some family. Um, You know, they were playing in College Park and, you know, they lost on the last possession to a Maryland team that was ranked at the time. Um, And um, I I think they're just better than they were last year, you know, and beating that Alabama team, like I mentioned, you know, that was a team that just beat Louisville um, in that MTE in Texas. So, um, you know, Diasia Fair is still there and she's still incredible. I think Georgia Woolley has improved. Um, Alyssa Latham is a freshman who really stepped up in that Alabama game. And I think Isabel Verigal gives them a presence in the paint that maybe they didn't have last year. Um, so, yeah, I, I do think that they're an NCAA tournament team, and I think they're going to continue to sort of, you know, continue to win these games that maybe they're not, quote unquote, supposed to um, and, and make some noise in the ACC this season. And were there any teams that worried you? Uh, I know you can't take too much away from from one game, but uh, any teams trending in that direction? 
Yeah, uh, you know, Florida State just lost its second straight game, um, and it was a bit of a blowout the way they lost to Arkansas. I think the thing with them is, you know, last year, Tanaya Latson just did so much for them. And now this year, you know, all these teams have film on Latson right now, right? Um, and I think the defenses are starting to sort of key in on her, and she's still making an impact in the game. Um, but I think they need more of the rest of the team to sort of step up around her. And they're getting some of that from um, Gordon and Michaela Timpson. Um, they both played well last night and contributed. Um, but I think they just sort of need an overall, you know, kind of team effort in these games against these ranked opponents. Um, they did beat Tennessee earlier this season, um, but, it, you know, it was a really close game. Um, you know, they had some trouble down in Florida as well against the Gators in a rivalry game. Um, you know, against Arkansas, the problem was they just didn't shoot all that well. I think they were just 28% from the floor and 24% from three. So, um, yeah, I think FSU has some kinks to work out. And there's still plenty of time left in the season uh, to do that. You know, what were some of your overall takeaways uh, from the ACC-SEC Challenge? Yeah, I mean, the first thing was, um, you know, just looking at the record and how things shaked out. These conferences are pretty even. Um, it went an even seven and seven in the 14 games. Um, you know, Pitt was the lone um, ACC team that didn't participate in it, you know, just to make it an even matchup. So seven and seven and two and two in the ranked versus ranked games. Um so, you know, I, that tells me that, you know, these two conferences are pretty even. Um, they've been in the past couple of years, you know, two of the best conferences in women's college basketball right up there with the Pac-12. Um, you know, Miami and Miami and Duke, I think, were both impressive in that, like, they both won these tough road matchups, right? Um, you know, Miami went down to Starkville and got a win over a ranked Mississippi State team. And then Duke, who's kind of had this weird up and down season, um, you know, where they lost to Davidson at home earlier this year, and then they took Stanford to OT. They go to Georgia and they they beat the Dogs in overtime in Athens. So I think those were two good games for them, uh, both Miami and Duke, in terms of just momentum and you know, sort of uh, making a name for themselves this season. And were there any individual performances that stood out to you uh, over the, the course of these two days? Yeah, you know, um, in that North Carolina, South Carolina game, I, I thought that um, Alyssa Utsby really played well and sort of got her groove back a bit after not playing so great down in Florida when they had those, those three couple of games. Um, even Dawn Staley was super complimentary of Utsby um, after the game. She had 18 points and 12 rebounds. Um, UNC won the rebounding battle in that game. I think that was part of the reason why, you know, they went up by 11, you know, early on. Um, but yeah, out rebounded South Carolina 45 to 39, which is really hard to do against a team that has, uh, you know, a six foot seven Camilla Cardozo there, uh, in the middle of the paint. So, um, yeah, let's be stood out. Um, and, uh, you know, Sonia Rivers played well again in her matchup, um, against Vanderbilt. Um, 22 points and, you know, kind of doing a little bit of everything there for NC State. Yeah, and uh, NC State, um, can you just talk a little bit more about, you know, their their momentum leading into this uh, and, and what they were able to do? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think they've kind of been, you know, sort of the big surprise this season. I think, I think a lot of folks thought that this was going to be a rebuilding year for the Wolfpack and Westmore. Um kind of came into this year with a lot of questions you know they ended last year on a bit of a sour note um you know they had a lead against Princeton in that NCAA tournament game wind up losing you know late down the stretch there um they had three starters leave in the offseason all transfers Diamond Johnson goes to Norfolk State Jakee Brown Turner ends up in Maryland and Camille Hobby goes to Illinois um, but I, what I've noticed so far, I've gotten the chance to see him in person a couple of times now, and, and this team is just having fun and the chemistry seems really good. And I think, you know, with a lot of the changes, um, there's been room for players to step up. Uh, you know, I mentioned Sanai Rivers. Um, she's playing better than she ever has before. She mentioned, I think, earlier in a press conference this season that she feels like she's the player that she was when she was in high school. Uh, when she, you know, became one of the top recruits in the country. Um, and she's really 
um, just shining and doing a lot of different things for NC State. Um, Isaiah James is playing well. She's uh, kind of a little bit like Rivers in that, you know, operates well in this sort of fast and free-flowing offense where they really get up and down the floor. And both of those players, it seems like they can get to the rim whenever they want, and they can both knock down the open three. Um, and River Baldwin is a player that I think – has surprised some people this year because she's a fifth year senior. So, you know, a lot of times in college basketball, once you get to your fifth year, you know, that player kind of is what they are at that point. Um, but she is sort of like emerged as, you know, this really key player for NC state this year so far. Um, she was one of the USBWA's players of the week. Um, she was the MVP of the paradise jam. I think she had 24 points that went over Colorado. She had a double, double her first of the season, um, in their win over Vanderbilt this week. So, yeah, they just have a lot of these key pieces stepping up. Um, and they have a really good freshman class that they've been able to lean on a little bit, you know, with Zoe Brooks and and some other players there. So, um, yeah, I mean, NC State right now looks like, you know, one of, if not the best team in the ACC. Awesome. And coming up next, we'll talk more about these teams and players uh, like NC State that have surprised us so far. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Some things I'm looking at this week include the weekly specials like Jalen Hurts and Russell Wilson combining for 100 plus rushing yards, the 49ers to run the bird gauntlet, defeating the Eagles in week 13, Seahawks in week 14, Cardinals in week 15, and Ravens in week 16, Jared Goff and Derek Carr combining for 600 plus passing yards, Depot Samuel scoring one or more rushing touchdowns. It's also not too late to bet on who will make the playoffs or win the Super Bowl, as well as who will win the AP regular season MVP, offensive and defensive player of the year, coach of the year, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. So, Mitch, we just talked about NC State. Has there been any other teams that have been surprising to you, either for positive or negative reasons? Um, I don't, I don't know if I'm surprised, um, by any teams negatively so far. Um, I think I am a little bit surprised that, um, Virginia Tech didn't win either game against Iowa or, um, LSU, you know, kind of their two big non-conference matchups this season. And they also, you know, had a little bit of trouble in their, um, MTE event, um, you know, against Kansas and Tulane winning both of those games pretty closely, Um, Like I mentioned before, I think it seems to me like Virginia Tech is just a team that's kind of trying to figure figure itself out and and feel its way through this non-conference season. And, um, you know, they were in that game with Iowa late and, you know, Caitlin Clark did Caitlin Clark things and there's nothing you can really do about that. Um, But, you know, LSU last night, they led early on in in the first quarter um, and then it just sort of got away from them. Um, I think they were up by as much as nine points and then LSU just, you know, outscored them, I think 22 to nine in that second frame. Um, So yeah, you know, uh, Elizabeth Kitley and Georgia Amor are still great, but I think they are also still looking for some of those other pieces to step up. Um, You know, Kayana trailer and Taylor soul just did so much for them last year in terms of like the little things, um, you know, the extra passes, the screens, the rebounding, um, that sort of stuff, and and hit some big shots every now and then too. So um, I think they're a team that, you know, they were picked to win the ACC again. And um, I think there's still a chance that they live up to those expectations. You know, we're a long ways um, from conference play, you know, getting started. Still got another month. So they got some time to figure some things out and maybe iron out some wrinkles here, um, you know, through the rest of December. And I, I'm 
sure I know the answer and anyone who's who's watched the ACC this year uh, knows the answer to this but what individual player is having a breakout start to the season yeah it's uh it's Hannah Hildago uh you know the freshman guard for for Notre Dame um you know I had a feeling coming into the season because of how Neil Ivey talked about her at ACC media day that Hannah Hildago was going to be a big time player you know the big question kind of coming into the season um in the ACC and one of the big questions of women's basketball as a whole was, is Olivia miles going to be able to play for Notre Dame? You know, she had that knee injury at the end of last season, um, sat out the ACC in the NCAA tournament and still hasn't come back this year. Um, but Neil Ivy seemed pretty calm about that. And they seemed Notre Dame at, at media day seemed to me prepared to play the season without Olivia miles. And I think what sort of, put them at ease a bit was, uh, you know, they had this player in Hannah Hildago, this freshman who comes in and, um, you know, in her first game in Paris against South Carolina, scores 31 points, um, you know, and she's had just some terrific performances so far this season, you know, 24 points in a neutral site win against Illinois, Um you know, the other day against Tennessee, you know, only scored 13 points, but contributed in so many other ways across the board, seven rebounds, seven assists, a couple steals. Um, I mean, actually seven games into the season so far, she leads the nation in steals with six per game, which is kind of incredible for a freshman um, to be sort of that aggressive and that good on the defensive end. Um, so she's going to be a player. I think she's far and away the favorite to win ACC Rookie of the Year. Um, she's averaging 23.3 points per game, which is six in the nation amongst all players. Um, so, yeah, she she's somebody that's going to be reckoned with, and I'm fascinated to see what this Notre Dame look, team looks like if and when Miles does come back and if and when Sonia Citron does come back. Um, you know, they, they just have all of these really good guards now. Um, so for the meantime, you know, in the meantime, I think they'll be fine with Hannah Hildago running things, but, um, should Miles and Citron return in ACC play, I think that's going to worry a lot of opponents. Definitely. And, and what have been some of those big non-conference wins, uh, overall so far, um, uh, excluding those that were in the, the ACC SEC, um, matchups? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, the big one was, you know, right there at the first week of the season when NC State beat UConn. Um, I was at that game. It was a packed Reynolds Coliseum. It was really awesome and really unexpected. I think, you know, even state fans, they were hoping to kind of keep things close, but I don't think they were expecting to beat UConn by double digits. Um and, you know, AZ Fudd was still playing for UConn when that game happened. Um, you know, they were mostly at full strength. And NC State kind of ran them off the floor. I mean, Sanai Rivers had, you know, the best game of her college career. And, you know, some of those NC State players that were around for that Elite Eight loss a couple years ago, um, I think Madison Hayes and Isaiah James were on that team, I, you know, felt pretty good about, you know, getting one back against UConn there. So that was a big one, and that sort of kind of announced NC State as, hey, don't forget about us. Uh, we're still good. You know, there's some new pieces here, but um, we're going to be reckoned with. And then NC State went, you know, in their uh, multi-team event over Thanksgiving, and they beat Colorado, um, handed the Buffs their first loss. And Colorado was this team like NC State who upset one of the early preseason favorites in LSU. So – um, I think NC State's, you know, pair of wins over top five opponents, I think they are the only team this season so far to beat multiple top five opponents. Um, those certainly, I think, take the cake. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier, Florida State and Notre Dame both beat Tennessee this season. I, I think those were um, important victories. Um, and at, so far, that's sort of been it. Um, we, we have some other, you know, good not conference games coming up before we get an ACC play, but really those two NC State victories kind of take the cake. And coming up next, we'll talk about players and non conference games to watch as the season continues to unfold. <clears throat> Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. 
Game time is the place for last minute tickets, flash deals, and zone deals, and they even have a lowest price guarantee as well as event cancellation protection and job loss protection. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive, which is just my favorite thing about game time. There's also all-in prices that show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal without hidden fees, and you can buy tickets in seconds with two taps. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWNNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. What team are you most excited to watch uh, in the next few weeks? Yeah, I'm um, looking forward to seeing, you know, how North Carolina responds to these now three straight losses, um, you know, and, and all three of those losses were to good teams, um, you know, Kansas State, Florida Gulf Coast and South Carolina. I think all three of those are going to be NCAA tournament teams, um, but, you know, three straight losses is three straight losses. So how does North Carolina respond to that? They have a mid-major game coming up against UNC Greensboro. And then next Sunday, they're going to play at UConn. So that's a big one. I mean, the, the big problem so far for North Carolina has been their shooting. Um, they're shooting just 24.5% from three-point range, which is 303rd out of 360 Division One women's college basketball teams this year. So that is not what you want if you're Courtney Banghart. Um, but the bright side is, is that UNC's defense has been really good and really efficient so far this year. Um, and I think it's keeping them in games. They're they're in the top 30 and in defensive rating on her hoop stats um, and uh, really good on that end. And I think it's keeping them in games. The other thing that they need is um, just sort of a third scorer to kind of step up. Um, Alyssa Utsby and Deja Kelly have been doing their thing, but I think they they could use, you know, some more consistent, reliable scoring, scoring from, um, you know, Alexi Donarski or um, – a Kayla McPherson or somebody like that. Um, so I, I think, you know, the, this next week is going to be crucial for, for North Carolina um, as it kind of finishes out the non-conference play. Um, you know, I imagine they'll get a win over UNC Greensboro and maybe that'll give them some good momentum heading into UConn. And who are some players to watch as the season continues? Yeah. Um, you know, I mentioned Sanaya Rivers earlier. She is definitely somebody we should keep an eye on. Hannah Hildago as well. Uh, Maria Gokdang is somebody, you know, that ACC folks are familiar with. Boston College before this season, North Carolina now. Um, she has sort of stepped up and, and been a little bit of kind of that, um, you know, third weapon for North Carolina in these past two games. Um, she played really, really well against Florida Gulf Coast. I think shot eight or eight from the floor and had 24 points in that win, so really good there. Um, and really gave, you know, Camilla Cardozo all she can handle last night. Um, you know, had eight rebounds on four or five shooting, excuse me, eight points on four or five shooting and 10 rebounds. Um, and did that while, you know, missing chunks of the second and third quarters because of foul trouble. So I sort of wonder, you know, how that game goes if we replay it and Maria Gokdang is not in foul trouble. Um the other player that I think is worth keeping an eye on that's sort of been under the radar this year is Cameron Taylor. Um, she's in her fifth season now, um, third season at Virginia, and just had probably the best game of her season last night against Missouri in a victory for Virginia, 26 points and nine rebounds. Um, she's averaging 15 points per game this year. And, you know, Virginia last year, they started out 12 and 0, looked really good, and then kind of got bit by the injury bug. So, if they can stay healthy this season and, you know, players like Cameron Taylor keep stepping up, I think they could be a tournament team as well. And what upcoming game should people put on their calendar? Yeah, uh, you know, that UNC-UConn one is a big one. That is uh, Sunday, December 10th. That's part of the Hall of Fame showcase there at Mohegan Sun. Um, also at, at that showcase is going to be Florida State going up against UCLA. So we'll see if – Florida State has kind of fixed some problems and, and see if they can give UCLA a good fight. Um, and then another one I have my eye on is Miami versus Baylor. Um, you know, Miami is undefeated this season. 
Baylor's undefeated so far. They both might still be undefeated when they meet up on December 16th. Um, that is a neutral site game in San Antonio, um, you know, not too far from Baylor. So I imagine there's going to be a lot of Baylor fans there. Um, but, you know, Miami, um, they just beat a ranked opponent at Mississippi State. They're going to get a chance to get another win over a major conference opponent when they played DePaul on December 8th. So, um, you know, this is a Miami team that went to the Elite Eight last year and shocked a lot of people along the way. Um, so I'm curious to see how they play against a team like Baylor. Yeah, really excited for that Hall of Fame showcase. Um, but what are you most excited about uh, as the season continues to unfold? Yeah, um, you know, we're getting into, yeah, the last month of non-conference play. So I'm just excited to watch, you know, some of these matchups. I'm going to drive up to UConn uh, next weekend and, and uh, I guess I'm not driving to UConn. I'm going to drive to Mohican Sun, rather, um, and catch that game against North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina has also got another neutral site game coming up against Oklahoma down in Charlotte on December 19th, just before Christmas. Um, and then we're going to get into conference play where um, I think right now, you know, we thought that Virginia Tech was going to be far and away the favorite coming into the season. Um, but now it kind of feels pretty open. You know, can Virginia Tech kind of recapture its magic from a year ago? Um, can Notre Dame get healthy and, and be dominant? And can NC State kind of continue um, the play that it's had in non conference play with these really impressive wins so far? So, um, you know, th those are the things that I'm kind of excited about and, and keeping an eye on. Um, and uh, it, it should be fun. Yeah, thanks for joining me today, Mitch. Learned so much from you. Where can the people find you and your work? Yeah, for sure. So uh, I'm on Twitter at Primetime Mitch. Um, I'm on Instagram at Primetime Mitch. And you can find my work at USA Today's For the Win and also at North Carolina Public Radio and every now and then at the next. Awesome. Thanks for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen every day. Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. And make sure to tune in to our draft experts, M. Hunter and Lincoln, every Saturday, including tomorrow. And make sure to tune in next Thursday, December 7th, and join me for a special WBL anniversary edition of Locked On Women's Basketball.